Today's Sunday Mass with Catholic Extension comes to you from St. Paul's Monastery Chapel in the Mission Diocese of Youngstown, Ohio. Good morning. I'm Father Jack Wall, the President of Catholic Extension. We build up and strengthen vibrant Catholic faith communities in America's poorest regions. Christ is clearly present among us in these places, and seeing the profound faith of these communities gives us hope. This is Father Jim Corda. On behalf of your Catholic friends and neighbors in the Diocese of Youngstown, I invite you to join us for this celebration of the Holy Mass. Welcome to our celebration of Holy Mass. Today is the fifth Sunday of Lent. Our celebrant is Father Jim Corda, president of CTNY, the Catholic television network of Youngstown. I am Ron Puhala from St. Christine's Parish. As we pray this Mass, let us remember in our prayers, Jimmy Powell. We walk by faith and not by sight. No gracious words we hear. From Christ who spoke as none e'er spoke, but we believe him near. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. I'm so glad to be with you today as we gather to celebrate God's love and presence on this Lenten Sunday. Let us acknowledge now our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us this day with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who opens a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, who leads out chariots and horsemen, a powerful army, till they lie prostrate together, never to rise, snuffed out and quenched like a wick. Remember not the events of the past, the things of long ago consider not. See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? In the desert I make a way, in the wasteland rivers. Wild beasts honor me, jackals and ostriches, for I put water in the desert and rivers in the wasteland for my chosen people to drink, the people whom I formed for myself that they might announce my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord, the Lord has, has done, done great, great things, things for us. We, we are, are filled, filled with, with joy. joy. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. The Lord, the Lord has, has done, done great, great things, things for us. We, we are, are filled, filled with, with joy. joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. The, the Lord, Lord has, has done, done great, great things, things for us. us. We, we are, are filled, filled with, with joy. joy. We store our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those that sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. The, the Lord, Lord has, has done, done great, great things, things for us. us. We, we are, are filled, filled with, with joy. joy. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. 
The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through the faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, depending on faith to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it, since I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I, for my part, do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies behind, but straining forward to what lies ahead. I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, for I am gracious and merciful. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin any more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, the law said that women should be stoned to death when caught in the act of adultery. That is what the gospel recorded. Now, none of us here would vote for that. And what about the man who was involved? He got off scot-free. Some Islamic republics, they are beheaded when they are found guilty of adultery. That makes us cringe when we even think of something like that. Stoning would have been even too much. But is this enough? Jesus did not even threaten the woman, let alone punish her. 
He simply said, neither do I condemn you, but from now on, sin no more. The woman left that day with a second chance. It was merely an act and gift of grace. Now, some people are troubled by the story in that more should have been done to the woman. She should have been shamed or shunned or at least scolded. Why are we so hesitant to embrace this story of grace? Well, one reason is that it may offend us to admit that we need that same grace. Now, the woman in the story was in a terrible circumstance. She had been caught red-handed in sin. All that she could say was guilty as charged. The only thing that could possibly have helped her that day was the very thing that Jesus offered, forgiveness and another chance, the gift of grace. Like the woman in the story, we need that same thing that Christ offered the woman today, forgiveness and a second chance. You know, at other times we are offended by grace because it violates our sense of justice. The law prescribed one thing, grace provided another. And that may offend us, especially when it applies to someone other than ourselves. The woman deserved to be stoned according to the law of Moses. But Jesus interfered. He suggested that the only person qualified to throw the first stone was a person who never sinned. No one, no one that day except Jesus could pass that test. Some people were offended by that. You see, it violated their sense of justice. You know, back in March of 1988 in Texas, a woman was executed for the crime of murder. Her name was Carla Faye Tucker. She was guilty, no question about it. It was in 1983 that she had helped commit a heinous crime. After that, she underwent a conversion, a conversion of total faith experience. And for years behind bars, she had been a model prisoner. Thousands had appealed for her clemency. Even the late Pope John Paul II sent a message asking that her life be spared. But at the appointed time, on the appointed date, Carla Faye Tucker was put to death. Was that justice? Only God knows. But I, for one, can't help wondering. Of this much, I am sure, when we feel most justified in our actions is when we need to be most careful about our actions. You see, the world is not neatly divided between saints and sinners, good and bad. The grace of God puts us all on the same level. The woman taken in adultery and her accusers were all sinners. Carla Faye Tucker and her executioners and those who pled her life and those who celebrated her death were all sinners. In the eyes of God, we all stand on the same level ground. Maybe that is why grace sometimes offends us. Together now, let us profess the faith that we all share. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, of, of all things visible and, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Humbly now let us present to God our special petitions. For the church that we may bring mercy and forgiveness to all, giving new life to sinners and showing the world alternatives to retribution and punishment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those in authority, particularly in our judicial system, that they may temper justice with mercy as they seek the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer for those who have been sentenced to death or to life without parole, that they may, may find comfort and peace as children of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who will be welcomed into the church at Easter, that they may be a sign for all of us of the constant <laughs> renewal of God's creation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer that we may continue to fast, pray, and give alms well beyond this Lenten season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. God in heaven, we praise and thank you for the gifts of forgiveness, <coughs> grace, and mercy. As we extend those same gifts to those in need, one day welcome us to your love in heaven. We make this prayer in the spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, <coughs> Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And let us pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through bodily fasting, you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ your Son. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna 
in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Paul, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, roof but only say, say the, the word, and, and my soul, soul shall be healed. healed. act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your head and pray for God's blessing. May God, the Father of mercies, who has given you an example of love, in the passion of his only begotten Son. Grant that by serving God and your neighbor, you may lay hold of the wondrous gift of his blessing. Amen. Amen. So that you may receive the reward of everlasting life from him, through whose earthly death you believe that you escape eternal death. Amen. Amen. And by following the example of his self-abasement, may you possess a share in his resurrection. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thank you for being part of our celebration of the Eucharist. We share a bond with our fellow Catholics as God is calling us to be one and share our gifts with each other. Won't you now help us build up and strengthen our church across the United States? Please call or visit us on the web and join us next week. May God bless you and all whom you love.